In this problem, we're told a dentist drill starts from rest. After 3.2 seconds of constant angular acceleration, it turns at a rate of 2.5 times 10 to the 4 revolutions per minute. A, find the drill's angular acceleration, and B, determine the angle in radians through which the drill rotates during this period. So imagine this right here is our drill, right? And so what we want to do first is always write down the information we're given. So what we want to do, right, this is going to be angular kinematics, essentially. And so basically, we just want to write down the angular kinematic variables that we're given, so or the rotational, right? And so in this case, right, we're given that it's going to start at rest. So we know the angular velocity, omega 0, essentially, is equal to 0 radians per second. And then we're told it's going to turn for 3.2 seconds, right? So the time interval it's changing is 3.2 seconds, right? And then after that, the final angular velocity, right, is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the 4 revolutions per minute. Right, so this is the information we're given. And so what we're trying to do for A is find the angular acceleration. Right, so we're trying to find alpha. Right, This is the angular acceleration. And so how do we find that? So the way you want to solve these problems is just like regular kinematic equations, but instead of uh, the kinematic variables, you're using rotational kinematic variables. Right, so instead of V, you have, instead of velocity, you have angular velocity. Instead of acceleration, you have angular acceleration, right, alpha. And then instead of like distance, like change in x or something, or x, right, you just have uh, theta, right, because it's angles now instead of distance. So basically, we're just going to use a kinematic equation, but replace the variables. So notice what we're given. We're given omega 0, we're given t, and we're given omega, and we're trying to find alpha, right? So the equation that pops in my head is omega equals omega 0 plus alpha times t. And notice from kinematics, right, you've done kinematics before, these are just the kinematic equations, right? This is just v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. But we're just replacing them with the uh, uh, rotational kinematic variables instead, right? So you should know kinematics, so I don't need to review how we get these equations. But basically, we just need to plug the numbers into this equation when we solve it. But when we do this, we need to make sure they're in the correct units. So notice, uh, I always write when something's in zero in radians per second, because when you solve these, they have to be in radians per second, right? Or radians, right? So notice this is in revolutions per minute, but uh, it needs to be in radians per second. It can't be in revolutions per minute, right? Because when we solve this, this is in seconds, and our alpha is going to be in radians per second squared. So first off, we have to convert this. So we have 2.51 times 10 to the 4 revolutions per minute. right? So first off, let's get rid of the minute. So we know one minute, if we put it on top, is the same as 60 seconds. right? That'll cancel out the minutes. And then we got to get rid of the revolutions. So we know one revolution is the same as 2 pi radians. right? That's conversion you have to know. And so that'll cancel out the revolutions. right? And now we'll just have radians over seconds, which is exactly what we want. right? We want radians per second. So basically what you want to do is just go ahead and do this 2.51, right? 2.51 times 10 to the 4, divide by 60, multiply by 2 pi, and you'll get 2628.47, uh, we'll say. So 2628.47, about, right? So this is going to be in radians per second, right? So this is going to be your new velocity, or angular velocity, sorry. So just keep that in mind. This is the number we're going to be using. So now that we have it in the correct units, right, we can actually go ahead and plug in. So we have... Uh, omega, or the final angular velocity, which we just solved for, 2628.47 is equal to omega 0. Omega 0 is just 0. So 0 plus is just the same as the thing on the right, so we don't need to write that. Alpha is what we're solving for, and then we're multiplying by t. So the time interval is 3.2 seconds. So dividing by 3.2, uh, and that's going to give us right alpha. So you basically want to do 2628.47. Uh, and so when I do this, uh, I'm using the full value so that I got when my calculator right? So when you do this, you're going to get it equals, or alpha is going to be equal to about 821.39, right? So uh, you can round this however you want. I'm just going to round to 8 point, or 821.4, and then the units are radians per second squared, right? Because this is in radians per second, and we're dividing by seconds. So radians per second squared. So this is going to be your answer to A. So that's going to be the angular acceleration alpha. So now we've done A. So this is A. Now let's do B. So B is going to be determine the angle in radians through which the drill rotates during this period. So just like kinematics, right, you solve for a distance, but, right, so in those you solve for a distance something travels, like it could be a car, right, moving at constant acceleration. But for these, you solve for how much something turns, right, so the angle at which it turns. So imagine like a distance, but instead it's just the angle through which it turns, right? So instead of like the normal equation where you have, uh, for example, right, so you have uh, delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. Right, so this is the normal kinematic equation, but instead we're going to have theta, right? This is going to be the angle we turn in radians, is equal to omega 0 times t plus 1 half alpha t squared. Right, all you're doing is replacing them with the uh, rotational kinematic in sort, instead of the normal kinematic. Right, so this is the equation we're going to use, right? Because notice we're given alpha. Well, you can choose many different, there's, right, so there's like 
four kinematic equations, you can choose which one. Uh, you just need to make sure it contains theta and uh, right because you have all the variables now. You have omega zero, you have omega, and you have alpha. So you can just solve uh, using any of them. I'm just going to use this one though, just because I think it's the easiest. So we have omega, right? It's going to be equal to omega zero. We know that's zero, right? So zero times t is still going to be zero. So we can just ignore that. And then it's just going to be plus one half times alpha, which we just solved for in the last problem. 821.4, right? 821.4 times t squared. So t squared is just 3.2. So 3.2 squared. So now you just want to plug this in your calculator. Basically do 821. 821.4, uh, multiply that by one half, right? And then multiply that by 3.2 squared. So when you go ahead and do this, you're gonna get four, you're gonna get theta equals 420, uh, 4205.5. And then keep in mind, this is in radians, right? Because it's just like distance, right? Or it's how far it turns in an angle. So 4205.5 radians, you can round however you want. So you can, be, uh, you can just say, uh, 4.21 times 10 to the uh, 3 radians, right? Because it's 3. Yeah, 3. So 4.21 times 10 to the 3 radians. Uh, you can round or choose whatever answer you want. So just make sure you do what your teacher wants you to do. But yeah, this is going to be your answer for B. So yeah, this is B. Uh, this was A. And hopefully you found this useful.